From above in the sunlight, the classroom, like the jungle, appears to be a pleasant place. Bill sits serene in his spot of class leader. Mrs. Dean is not unaware of the forces at play below the surface. But liking children, she is not afraid to look at them honestly. She sees them as people, not as apprentice angels. She's glad that Bob shares his turtle with all of them. Shares, that is, everything but his sense of ownership. She knows that Stuart likes school. He's not afraid of it. It seems safe enough. On such a day, who can see into the dark places? Bill and Stuart are friends. Behind the shield of Bill's bigness, Stuart safely states his own opinions. Any other nomination? Stuart, I nominate Bill. Who seconds that nomination? Gary? I second the nominate Bill. Any other nomination? Linda. I nominate Charles. All right, that's enough. That's enough. Who seconds that nomination? Keith? I nominate. Stuart always nominates Bill in the class elections. In return, Bill always selects Stuart as his second in command. They have, you see, a working political alliance. They are both seven, but their feelings are centuries old. Practical is the word for young society. Of course, friendship, like all social relations, has its obligations. Each morning, Bill and Stuart take the school bus together. If all goes well, that is. Stuart has yet to get his mornings firmly in hand. But Bill has a leader's taste for action. With Bill's foot in the door, Stuart has yet to miss the bus. This same morning, two new boys start for school. Tom and Alan Drake are brothers. They're not friends, nor are they enemies. Let us say that they are antagonists. Maybe it's because drugstore counters are not good places for children to breakfast. Tom may still be hungry. Or Alan too cowed to keep his share. Perhaps Tom is frightened by the thought of the new school. It's new to Alan too. But violence is not new. We learn from our environment. Each day brings a new lesson. Or the same lesson learned over and over again. We go to school to learn. We take with us what we already know. That day, Mrs. Dean is ill, and a substitute takes her place. She's kind, but inexperienced. She cannot know the secret dark places in the class. Even a happy routine can be upset by novelty. There was a sense of tension in the air that day. You may be one of the team captains. What's your name? Alan Drake, my brother is in sixth grade. <laughs> and you? His name is Bill. Boyfriend! Good, Bill. You and Alan may be team captains. Miss <laughs> Quiet, Yes, right away. You two go ahead and choose your teams. I'll be back right away. Charles, do you want to be on my side? Yeah. Thanks. Linda, do you want to be on my side? No, I'd rather be on Bill. Well, I'll sock you on the moon. Want to be on my team? What's on your team? Caroline, Charles, and a few others. Okay, Al. Come on, let's get going. I... I picked Stuart. I'm on his team. You're a big stinker. 
Now there you call me a stinker. Stewart, go up to my desk. Well, what do you have to say for yourself? In that case, you can say to the principal. Uh -huh. Stewart doesn't know what happened. He's sure that he isn't to blame. He doesn't know who is. He thought school was fun. Bill doesn't know why Stewart punched him in the ear. Alan doesn't know what happened at all. Those things just happen. Stewart badly feels a need of explanation, and he isn't going to get it from punishment. The punch hurt Bill's ear, but it also broke Stewart's most valued friendship. Mrs. Dean came back in a few days. Even in her sick bed, she had heard of the disorder, the violence, the trouble. But what caused it all was a mystery. She would have to look for the reasons. She would have to look at the children honestly, searchingly. Most of them take their appointed places. Some of them gather around her desk as usual. Their questions about her health express their own need to be recognized. Here is the first difference. For now, that routine need is increased. Again, something different. Stuart and the new boy together. And Bill alone, apart from Stuart. What is this new alliance? What is this new loneliness? Mrs. Dean loses no time in getting acquainted with Alan. He is a logical starting place. She learns that Alan and his family have recently moved from a nearby town. According to Alan, they seem to move a great deal. His father travels a lot. He likes games. He will eat lunch at school. He has charm. He needs to be liked. With her, charm is his weapon. But she can be impervious to charm when the class is in trouble. In such a little time, they've gone back such a long way. For her, there are a dozen danger signals. Linda has gone back to following with her finger. Carol Ann has converted her love of pets into a new and violent game. Malcolm has forgotten how to work the simplest sums. And Alan, if this is self-expression, it is a troubled self that is being expressed. Charles has lost all interest. Bill does the same lessons over and over. Laddie is at war. Mrs. Dean looks for growth and finds the rubble of war. Next week, it is our turn to provide a flag bearer for the school's color guard. Rather than my appointing someone, suppose you choose somebody, as we often do in other things. Write the name of the one you want on this paper. Alan, no one else is asking for votes. Please pass your ballots to the front of the room. Come on, pass them up now. All right, Philip, you pass yours over here to Lindley. Tracy over to Philip. Mary over to Donald. All right, Charles, suppose you be our recorder. You may go to the front. And Donald and Tom, suppose you be our tellers. Donald will let you open the ballot, and Tom, suppose you read them to Charles. Pete. If there's more than one shot, I keep on saying them until I get a different one. Oh, yes, you keep reading each one, and suppose you put them on Lindley's desk okay. as they're read. Alan. Alan. Bob. Carol. Bob. Bill. 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 Bob. King. 
Alan, Carol, Bill, 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 Carol, Bob, Carol, Bill, Carol, Keith, Keith, Bob, 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 Keith, Keith, Bill. All right, Charles, you may go to your seat now. Thank you very much. You've done a nice job. It looks to me, class, as if Bill is our winner. I take even. I take odd. One. Twice. Right. Shoot. Mine. One. Twice. Right. Shoot. Yours. One. Twice. Right. Shoot. Mine. I pick Stuart. I want Stuart. I'm already on his side. Well, I'll suck in the nose if you don't play on my team. Back with you. You always want to fight. I heck with you! So, simply, the status quo is restored. The rejection of Allen gives the class a sense of momentary relief. Of course, the problem of Allen still remains. Why aren't you playing with again? The Stuart wouldn't be on my side. Ah, oh, you big baby. The problem of Alan remains for the class, for Stuart, for the teacher to solve. Violence is not always unhealthy. A good tussle can be fun. But violence based on hate is an illness. Stop it, both of you. What's your name? Tom Drake. You're Alan's brother? Yes, sir. His big brother. Who's your teacher? Mr. Evans. We'll report to him right away. Tell him you've been fighting. I'll see him later. Better go wash your face now, Alan. Recess time is almost over. He didn't hurt me. Well, that's good. Are you going to send Alan to the principal's office for fighting? If you were in my place, would you send him? I bet his brother started it. What makes you say that? His brother must have started it. Did you see him start it? His brother's bigger. Well, I wouldn't go around saying those things unless I was sure of what I was saying. Yes, ma'am. Can I go play now? Trouble? Yes, Alan and Tom Drake. Tom told me he'd been fighting, but not with his brother. Alan likes to use his fists. Maybe he learned that from Tom. Oh, it's like that? Know anything about the family? No, I talked about seeing the father once or twice, but Tom got so upset I decided not to. It doesn't sound good. You know, I've had a feeling about Alan, the way he pulls at the other children and tries to hang on to me. He's hungry for, for something. Love, attention. Maybe both of them should be put on Mary Askett's list. Let her see both of them, and the parents. You know, I think you're right. This is exactly where child guidance ought to come in. And let's not wait until real trouble develops. Of course, as far as Alan is concerned, real trouble is already here. Oh, yes? Well, nothing in particular, just the general situation in the class. It's all stirred up. That bad, huh? Do you think Alan should be moved? No, not that bad. But I can't let it go on. I know what I'll do. This afternoon, the human relations discussion. This is a problem that's real close to home. What do you think? I think you should do it. It's time for our story period now. Instead of reading you a whole story, I'm going to tell you part of one, and then we can talk about it. As you know, some of our stories have been about many things. Some of them have been about people. And this one I'm going to tell you today is going to be about people. In the problem, there are two girls who are sisters. One is six years old, and the other is ten. The six-year-old used to be a most pleasant child, but during the last year, she has become very cross and unpleasant. She doesn't listen to her parents or her teachers. She tries to boss the children around at school. 
And when she can't have her way, she gets angry and causes a lot of trouble. In general, she's proved very hard to get along with. I want you to put yourself in the place of the child's teacher and tell me what you would do in this case. Now think of some of the ways teachers and other people have solved the same kind of a problem in the stories I've read to you. Now what do you think the teacher might do in this case? Malcolm? Punish her. Maybe something happened to her. Make her stay after school. Don't let her have any recess. Maybe she's sick. I know what made her so bad all of a sudden. Yes, find out how she became so bad all of a sudden. The teacher who had this girl in her class found out that she was being picked on by an older sister. Now, how do you think being picked on by an older sister made her feel? She might fight back. She may want to pick on others. Well, they won't like her if she picks on others. She'll have no friends if she keeps up, she won't. Yes, and when the teacher thought about this, how being picked on may have had made this little girl feel that she had to fight in order to prove herself, the teacher decided to do something about it. One of the little girls in the classroom said that this girl could do some fine weaving. So they had her bring that to class to show. She also became a good reader, and the class often had her read to them. The discussion goes on under Mrs. Dean's guidance, and the whole class is involved emotionally. But Alan is offered an escape from uneasiness, while Stuart senses some vague parallel, and Bill sees actual application. Each one in the class learns what he is ready to learn. In this respect, a lesson in feelings is no different from a history or spelling lesson. Alan's personal problems will continue to be a source of trouble. Deeply disturbed feelings are not set right by class discussion only. What will the other children do about them? For example, what action will Bill and Stuart take? Will the discussion bring concrete results? Is Bill any more understanding now? Can he do anything about it? Will Stuart apply the story? When we have learned cause, we are equipped to deal with effect. We can learn. Some hidden things live only in darkness. Some hidden things die in the light. Seven is not too young to see. At seven, we are already part of a social structure. Alan, bred on violence, cannot easily learn to live with peace. His society has learned not only to protect itself, but to even help him a little. Some of the old balance has been restored. There will be more help from the Mary Ascots, the experts in child guidance, and help to be gotten from the family itself. There will be more school days and time for more discussions. There are words to be remembered. Well, I'll suck in the nose if you don't play on my team. Each weapon breeds its own defense. She'll have no friends if she keeps up, she won't. We start looking for cause only after we notice effect. I know what made her so bad all of a sudden. Yes. Find out the hidden causes. Maybe she's sick. Mental sickness can be contagious. But in this field, like any other, hygiene and education can go hand in hand. And that's reassuring. 